Good morning, everyone. Hello, welcome. We are about five minutes away. Sorry, I had to squint at my other screen over there. Um, I need to get a something with bigger numbers uh, closer to me. Um, but good morning. We're so glad you're here. We've got lots of folks uh, uh, coming in the room uh, to be here for the town hall. So good morning. Um, and gosh, for some of you, it's nice and bright and early. Um, we've got about five minutes before we get started. So you've got plenty of time to go get another cup of coffee or uh, some more breakfast, maybe early lunch and, uh, you know, early brunch, something like that. Anyway, whatever you need to make yourself comfortable uh, before we get started. We will get started right at the top of the hour. And I just wanted to come on and say good morning and say hello and welcome. So glad that um, all of you are here this morning. I'm going to um, uh, uh, reach over. So I'm probably going to turn off my camera for just a moment um, to, to get my um, uh, Timepiece that has bigger numbers, uh, actually, which is my cell phone. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll be right back, but so glad you're here with me uh, this morning. Good morning. Okay, I think I'm getting myself settled here um, just to have a uh, clock easier to see. Um, so good morning, everyone. Glad to see you here watching names as they pop in this morning from all over the state. It's great to have you all joining us so early. Good morning. Lots of wonderful Amy's in the room. That makes my heart happy. Um, lots of other folks as well. Good morning, Anita. Glad you're here. Um, good, and thank you for saying good morning in our chat panel. That's awesome. Uh, great to see you. And lots of folks here this morning um, and many more folks popping in. You can always tell when, right before it's time to start. Lots of folks entering the room, which is awesome. Um, so glad that all of you are joining us and um, just watching those numbers tick up. That's great. We've got about three minutes before we get started. So uh, not to worry um, if you um, are hearing my voice and you're worried that we've already started. We haven't. I'm just saying good morning so that you can uh, make sure that your um, uh, audio is working just fine. And I got Mary and Colleen saying good morning, everyone. Yes, good morning. Uh, the, all the, uh, the echoes of good morning. It's wonderful. Happy Monday. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. We're going to get started in about two minutes. So um, run, get another cup of coffee or some more water if you're like me um, and, and get settled in because uh, we'll get started right at the top of the hour in about two minutes. And there's Doreen saying good morning. Good morning, everyone. So glad you're here. Uh, folks are, are popping through uh, very quickly. Sarah, good morning. Glad you're here. Welcome. Um, glad you've joined us this morning for our town hall. That is fabulous. Um, I see lots and lots of uh, friends and colleagues from across the state. It's just wonderful to have um, some time with everyone this morning. Uh, very glad you're here. Good morning, Rachel. Glad you're here. Um, awesome. Wonderful to uh, have folks. You may want to, while we're getting sort of settled, uh, get yourself acclimated with the uh, question panel because uh, you may have questions today or you may just want to say good morning. Hi, good morning, like Allison just did and Celeste, thank you so much. Uh, glad to see folks and good morning. We've got about one minute before we get started. So um, I will um, uh, just let you, give you one more chance to go get some more coffee or hot tea and it's, it's chilly up here in Tallahassee this morning. So, um, you know, you may, may want something warm uh, this morning and good morning, Scott. Um, glad everyone is here. We're gonna get started in exactly one minute as soon as my uh, computer tells me it's top of the hour. I'm really glad you're here today for our town hall meeting. 
Um, if by some chance my, um, yes, and Leah says, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Yes, good morning and happy Valentine's Day. Um, if my video goes wonky, uh, my wonderful tech folks will let me know and I will uh, uh, take my camera down, but uh, hopefully keep talking. So hopefully you would still be able to hear that. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, might be Monday morning for my computer network, right? Yes, so um, so good morning, everyone. It is 10 o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and um, get ready to get started. I do see that folks are still coming in the room. Um, welcome, so glad you're here. Um, folks are still popping in, but it is right at the top of the hour. Um, first and foremost, I, I do wanna say um, uh, thank you so much to Daryl Horton and to Tom Pena for doing uh, tech, uh, uh, the technical support today for this. Um, it is really um, awesome when all I have to do is just talk and they take care of, of all the other things on the um, on the the end of you. So if you're having any trouble at all, they are here and can help. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Daryl and Tom. Couldn't do this without you. I also have um, online this morning uh, and we'll be able to, to answer questions as we need to. Uh, Kathy Maloney from the Division of Library Information Services and Jim Walther from the Tampa Bay Library Consortium. Consortium. Uh, so again, good morning as we get started here. My name is Amy Johnson and I am the Director of the Division of Library and Information Services or my uh, sort of fun title is the State Librarian of Florida, a title which I, I wear with, uh, with great honor and pride. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm so glad that you're here today with us to join us for this resource sharing town hall meeting. So really, really glad. We wanted to bring everybody together this morning uh, to give you an update on our statewide courier service and um, to, to let you know a couple of things, a couple of changes that are coming down the road. Um, and so just really glad that you are um, you're here. Um, I will let you know that we are recording this uh, town hall, and so the um, the uh, the the town hall will be recorded. So you can go back to this recording at any point. It'll be up on our um, on our YouTube channel. Um, I will tell you there. There also is going to be some written information sent out. Um, a little later this week um, about the things we're going to talk about today. So, and certainly more information will be coming. So anyway, so glad you're here uh, to talk to us today and to learn more about our resource sharing uh, 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 town at our town hall. So first and foremost, I, I want to say a huge thank you to the Tampa Bay Library Consortium um, at, at TBLC uh, for their support, um, in resource sharing over the years. So for more than 25 years, um, the Division of Library and Information Services has been partnering with TBLC in support of resource sharing across the state. And so we are so very thankful for their um, help and partnership um, in, in that. And you all know that um, back in the fall, we made a major change um, from one courier uh, to, a, to the UPS courier. Um, and so we were together uh, and, and at a town hall meeting for that particular uh, change. And today we have more um, changes and announcements to make. And so that's why we're together. Um, so let me just, just, just gonna jump right in here and let you know um, that the state of Florida, so I'm talking about the, you know, the, the state of Florida um, and, and actually the Department of Management, through the Department of Management Services, has um, decided to no longer have a contract with UPS. And so um, our courier is going to be changing vendors yet once again. Um, we will be changing to the FedEx courier. The good news is that we are moving from one known uh, package um, uh, company to another um, known um, vendor. And so we're really um, excited about the opportunities of working with FedEx. The other thing that we know is that the last conversion that we did from um, T-Force to UPS taught us a lot. And so we have a lot of information moving forward um, 
that we did not have uh, back in the fall when we made this change. And so we are um, we are working uh, to uh, get things ready to move to the FedEx courier. And that is the change that we will be moving to FedEx. This change will happen sometime in March. Um, as of today, we don't have the fully fleshed out timeline that will be released shortly. Um, and we will be making sure that everyone's aware uh, once that particular uh, time frame is announced. But we do know it will happen in March. So we will be moving couriers from the current courier UPS to FedEx. One of the things that um, is that is good to know or that you should know is that the state of Florida's contract that we will be using is for FedEx ground. So it's specific to FedEx ground. Um, other sorts of FedEx shipping like super duper fast, whatever they call it, express, next day express, air, whatever they call it, um, those are not covered under the contract that we will have. It will be only FedEx ground. Um, and one of the things that is important to know about this change that is that is coming down the pike. So in March, we will move to FedEx um, at a yet to be announced date. And the other thing that is changing is that we will no longer be using the orange bags for um, ILL packages, for resource sharing packages. So the orange bags will be retired. So whatever at whatever day we make that cutover to FedEx, uh, that is the day uh, that all of your orange bags are retired um, in place uh, with you. You may find other uh, uses for them um, locally, but they will not be used for interlibrary loan any longer. Um, after we move to the FedEx vendor. Now, it's important to, for me to circle back. I was just telling you that our contract, the contract that the state of Florida has um, procured for the whole entire state um, is for FedEx ground. And FedEx ground does not have any packaging that they can supply. So we wanna make sure to let you know today that um, you will, once we make this change, um, individual libraries will be responsible for packaging materials. So jiffy bags, boxes um, that are recycled and reused if they're in good uh, condition um, or new um, will need to be supplies that you have on hand in order to continue to participate in interlibrary loan once we move to FedEx. And again, that date has not yet been announced that we are um, still working out the timeline for that particular move, but we know it will be in March and we'll be moving to FedEx ground. Many of you may have already been aware that this uh, change was about to happen because this particular state contract with UPS, so let me go back to our current contract, um, is no longer going to be supported by the Department of Management Services. And so this affects all state agencies, uh, cities and counties that use that um, state contract, um, as well as colleges and schools, um, universities and K-12 schools as part of, of, of county government. Um, you may already be aware that that UPS uh, contract is coming to an end. Um, and so, uh, at all everything is uh, the mailroom and everything here and for other state agencies and I'm sure again locally um, are all moving to this FedEx contract so um, we need a couple of more uh, uh, days and weeks to finalize that time frame for this changeover but again we wanted to let you know as quickly as we could that this is coming and part of the reason we want to let you know is that we'll need to in the next a week or so, make some accounts um, live. And so, again, we want this information to be out and, and, and so that you have the knowledge of why you're getting emails. But also, let me also reiterate that um, we will be sending out information in um, writing to every participating library um, so that you will have a, a lot more information than you have um, right now today through this town hall. So those are um, really the big announcements. Uh, 
big change uh, coming as far as a vendor change coming in March, but yet to be determined date. Um, we're moving to FedEx. Um, we are retiring the orange bags. So when we move to FedEx, those orange bags will no longer be um, in use or usable. And again, that will be sometime in March. So I'm getting ready. Those are really the things we wanted to make sure that you're aware of today um, in this particular event. And so I'm getting ready to uh, make sure that we answer all of your questions. Um, but before I do that, I do want to uh, ask um, Kathy Maloney and um, and Jim Walther, who are also working um, on this particular transition, if they have anything they want to add before we start answering questions. So Kathy, have you got anything to add? I, I don't really have anything to add other than, as Amy said, we, we have learned a lot moving to UPS. So we're trying to get all of our accounts um, in place all of our information in place before we send it to FedEx. So hopefully we can avoid some of that back and forth trying to get accounts straight. Great, thank you, Kathy. Jim, have you got things you, you would um, like yeah, to chime in? Sure. Just one thing that we always like to encourage that everyone gets our newsletter. Uh, if you do not receive the TBLC delivery newsletter. If you can email us at tblcdelivery at tblc.org. More than one staff member in your library can receive that newsletter. We suggest it and prefer it. So please make sure that all of your library staff that are working in Courier and now with this new product, we want to make sure that everybody gets the timeline, gets the announcements. We want to prevent any lost books. The one thing that we'll do is we are already building the FedEx page of our website. So when the information about UPS goes away, um, it will be more than obvious because it will be a completely different website, a web page on our website. So the UPS will be gone, the FedEx information will be available. So there will be a very clear transition that you can't use UPS because the address label database will be gone. So it'll be very clear which vendor you will be using at what date in March. Right. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. And, and Kathy. All right. So we do have some questions. So if you have questions, um, you may want to put them in the question uh, panel or the, the question, um, whatever it's called, the question box I don't or question chat panel is what it's labeled for me, but it may also be question panel for you. So we do have some questions coming in. So I'm going to uh, pop to the top and answer some questions. Um, so there's a question that says, can we throw out the orange bags? Um, you may want to use orange bags as long as we're with the UPS vendor. Um, once we make that change in March, uh, some point in March to the FedEx vendor, you can decide what to do with the orange bags. I am sure there will be, um, some, uh, lots of conversation about, um, things that could be done with the orange bags, um, certainly throwing them away, especially if they're worn out. Um, we have a lot of orange bags that are showing their age um, and are very thin. And um, so certainly those I would absolutely suggest throwing out. Um, the others, you certainly may throw them out or you can um, listen for options on how to use them. Um, um, in other ways, uh, either in your library system or uh, or or elsewhere. Um, so there's another question that says, in terms of our contract, will there be a price increase? Um, and we do not anticipate a price increase. We anticipate the prices to be um, similar to what we've been paying under um, the UPS contract. And and again, remember these uh, we're, we are now. Since we've gone to UPS and once we moved to FedEx, it's a true package vendor. So what's being paid is um, just like I, I mailed a package to my daughter uh, yesterday. So just like just like that, it's how far is it going and how heavy is it and how big's the box, right? That's what determines the price. The nice thing is, well, the not nice thing is when I mailed my package uh, to Jim Marin at yesterday. Of course, I was paying 
regular old rates, right? The, um, the, and, and what we will be paying, what we're paying now under UPS and what we will be paying under FedEx is state negotiated rates. And so they are below retail rates, which is good. And so we do not have anticipate a major price increase with this change. We, it will remain uh, very similar. Um, so, and again, another question about orange bags, so stay tuned um, on the orange bags. I can only imagine how um, some library systems uh, may want to repurpose those bags. So stay tuned on that. Um, there'll certainly be more information coming out about the orange bags, especially if, um, if you uh, want to uh, work on getting those orange bags to where they uh, might be loved um, elsewhere uh, across the state. So stay tuned on that. We're, we're, um, we're not, we don't have that information quite yet. As I said, there's a lot of things that we're still working on. Um, so to my tech uh, uh, folks, there are, okay, great. So I see that um, we've got some things going out to, to everyone. So you should have now the um, URL for um, in the chat box to join the mailing list. That's great. Jim mentioned that. That's wonderful. Um, let's see. Will library, so I'm, I'm looking at the questions. Will the libraries not part of the UPS shipping be part of the FedEx shipping? Well, that certainly could be, Sarah. Um, if at any point, if a library wants to join us and join as part of this contract, they can be added uh, to the FedEx account. So just like we've always been doing through our, our friends and partners at um, the Tampa Bay Library Consortium, um, you just let them know if you want to participate in the state courier and um, we can get a uh, library signed up. So certainly you don't have to be part of the UPS now in order to participate in FedEx later. Um, so, so that's a great question. And there, okay, all right. All right, so I've got a question that says that a particular university does not have a contract with FedEx. Um, how will this work with institutions that don't work with FedEx? Um, so the contract is held by the state of Florida, specifically the Department of State Division of Library Information Services. And so if you're participating in the statewide career, you'll be using the, the state um, courier account number. Um, and you will be able to, just like you're doing right now um, with uh, UPS, then using Campus Ship and that address book that's there, and Jim did um, mention that, that address book will go down, the Campus Ship, I'm sorry, I'm all tangled up. The Campus Ship address book will go down um, in UPS and there'll be an address book in FedEx and you'll be able to use that, um, that address book um, in FedEx. And so the, the, it doesn't matter that you don't have a local account. That's no problem whatsoever. All right. Um, so there, the damaged and lost items will be handled. Um, that we're going to be announcing a procedure for that. Just, just like when we moved from uh, our T-Force courier, sorry, that's a tongue twister for me, sorry, um, to UPS, we had a process on how to continue to work on claims and lost items with the previous vendor. We will have that same in process, so stay tuned. We're working on that. Um, let's see. Uh, will there be multiple staff accounts? Yes, it'll, you'll see that to be very similar and parallel as you currently have in UPS for the new FedEx. Um, yes, there will be a cutoff date for using UPS. Absolutely, there will be. Um, and that is, uh, there'll be several different ways that that is communicated out. Um, we will have advanced communication of the timeline once that is set on a cutover date or cutoff date from UPS. There will also be um, the, on the TBLC uh, webpage, there will be, uh, changes, as Jim um, alluded to, there'll be changes on the TBLC delivery webpage and also the um, UPS campus ship address book will totally go away. Um, and that will be another hint that uh, we've hit that date to cut over uh, to FedEx. So we're, we're doing our very best to send out information as many different ways as we can, because we know there are a lot of folks using this. And so we wanna make sure that everybody has all the information they need. 
Um, uh, there's a question about scales, and um, we are still working on trying to buy scales. I will tell you that scales, as you um, can imagine, like other things in your life, um, scales are incredibly difficult to find. They are all on back order. We have um, ordered so many scales that cannot be delivered uh, currently, and I think now there may be some manufacturing issues as well. Um, one of the things that I know, we expressed this when we spoke to FedEx executives, that there are many locations that don't have scales. Um, and what they said was that they understood the problem um, with getting scales to you all. Um, and what they said is that we do have to have an, uh, an estimated weight, um, but it's okay if you don't have a, a precise scale weight. Um, so we'll, again, we'll give you some more guidance on that. And we will, we're certainly still uh, working on buying scales. Um, all right, and I wanna call attention to um, the mailing list uh, webpage link that's in the chat. Um, there was also a, an email address that, uh, that Jim mentioned that folks are asking for. So I don't know if it's gone out in chat or as well, um, but it would be nice. Um, and I, I'm uh, there. We thank you. Okay, so I can tell you what that is. It's TBLC delivery at tblc.org. And in just a moment, I know somebody who is much smarter than I am will be able to put that uh, out so that other folks can see that as well. But for right now, it is T. Thank you, TBLC delivery at tblc.org. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, we got a question here. If a book was damaged by um, UPS on its way to another library, which library is responsible to claim? Do we claim with UPS or TBLC? Um, and um, I know we're gonna have some more uh, guidance on this and I think there, there is guidance currently on our webpage. Jim, do you wanna take this question in particular? Okay, so UPS, you, okay, so if a book was damaged by UPS, you do need to claim it with UPS, and it's the sending library that needs to make that claim, not the owning library, the sending library needs to make that claim. Um, there is more information on the TBLC webpage, um, and you will be able to, um, uh, we'll, get, we'll provide some additional information there as well. Um, and Amy, I just had a comment about the um, okay. the cutoff date for UPS. It won't be as big of a concern as cutting off from T Force because there won't be a specific date. Once you print a UPS label, as long let's just say March 15th. If you print it on March 15th, then it leaves the door. If it leaves the library, you sh you're fine. Once that li label has left, the package is gone. It's in the truck. It's going to the library. The concern with the last cutoff was that there was a van was much different when it wasn't label based. But once you've printed that label from UPS, you can rest assured that it will get there, it will get billed, the cutoff has been made. Once the address database is gone, it's very clear you can't print any more UPS labels. So we shouldn't have as much question of like, when is the last day of UPS? As long as you can physically print the labels yourself, it's still on, it's still working. Perfect, thank you, Jim, perfect. And again, more information will be on our web pages, on the TBLC webpage, um, the TBLC delivery webpage, and, and there will be, we will be sending out some written follow-up information. So again, we're, we know that, um, that uh, we'll, we need to share this out and we will just as soon as it's all developed. All right, so next question. Will FedEx be the same as UPS when it comes to multiple campuses where each campus is an additional charge for stops? So um, to be clear, in UPS and FedEx, there is no charge for stops. There are charged for packages based on weight, distance, and size of the package. Um, we are, we've totally moved away from paying for so many stops per location per week. It is package based. And so it is a local decision about how many different campuses you want to, to arrange 
to be part of this uh, system. Um, but there's no additional cost um, at all it, because it's just the number of packages with the weight and how far they're going because it's a real package um, uh, uh, system instead of a, a number of stops per week system. So FedEx is the same as UPS in that it is a local decision about how many different locations you would like to be able to um, send out resource sharing items and therefore how, you know, and so what would be listed in the, in the address book that is a local decision. So as many places as you would like, and that that is um, not going to cause any increased cost, um, and, unless you're just sending a lot more packages, once you get a lot more locations added, um, there, there will not be any additional cost based solely on the number of locations. All right, so there's a question here about zebra labels, and I don't even know what that is. It sounds beautiful um, and probably uh, important. I'm guessing maybe the barcode is a zebra label. We will have the ability, once you get the address book uh, set up for FedEx and once we're into FedEx, we will be, you will be printing labels just like you're printing labels now. Um, and so if that's a zebra label, uh, Kathy or Jim, do you all know anything about zebra labels? Amy, I, I think I may. Um, are you talking about the, the zebra label printer that you may have gotten from UPS? Um, if so, FedEx is not providing like printers. Correct. So, so okay. That thank you for that, Kathy. That um, uh, we will not have label printers for FedEx, um, and we will no longer uh, be supporting UPS. So, um, I'm not sure what you'll do with that printer, but it won't work for FedEx. Um, I have a question about what spurred the change, and so I'll um, reiterate uh, that. Uh, the state of Florida, uh, and you, you know, that is the uh, through the Department of Management Services, which handles all state contracts for all of us state agencies, as well as city and county governments, uh, K-12 schools, um, universities and colleges, they made the decision that they would not continue a statewide contract with UPS. And one of the things I didn't say earlier, but I will add now, is that um, we are aware that this same uh, change is happening across uh, at least the Southeast. We know that the North Carolina uh, statewide courier system, statewide library courier system has just moved from UPS to FedEx because the UPS contract is no longer being um, or is no longer active, I don't know, or whatever's the right word there, um, in North Carolina. So this is happening um, several different states, and it was a decision not made by the Division of Library Information Services or TBLC. Um, this was something that um, was uh, decided, in essence, for us uh, by uh, the state of Florida. The good news is the FedEx contract is good for a number of years. And I will tell you, the state of Florida does a lot of business with this kind of courier. So I would imagine that, um, that there, it will be renewed, but we don't have to worry about that for a number of years. Yay. So um, that's what spurred the change is a, is a true, uh, a true change in the way that the state government is, uh, uh, has con has its contracts take contracts um, the URLs and the emails to sign up the newsletter are in the chat panel um, so the next question um, uh, says who's getting the invoice well the invoices the the current UPS invoice and what will be the FedEx invoices are coming weekly to the Division of Library and Information Services and weekly the Division of Library and Information Services is are, we're paying those invoices right now to UPS and soon to be to FedEx in March. Um, so that is how that is happening. If you're using our courier and our account, then the library is not invoiced. The uh, Division of Library and Information Services is invoiced and we make those payments. Um, yes, yeah, so the uh, question on the Email address. I'm still I'm still going through our questions here. Statistics. Yes, we know how um, important um, 
the uh, statistics are to you all. And yes, we will be providing statistics either um, as much as we can through the uh, FedEx uh, admin, so what I'm looking for, uh, account. Um, and, and certainly we will have some access to statistics as, uh, also. So again, we will we'll be providing that. Um, that any scale that you're currently using to weigh books will work just fine um, with FedEx. So I'm glad if you already have a, uh, a, a scale. Um, there's a question here that says, my system has cloth zipper bags for internal uses. Can these be used for ILL delivery? Um, and I will say, uh, no, uh, we have not spoken to uh, FedEx about um, anything other than Jiffy bags and cardboard boxes, sort of typical um, mailing materials. Um, and when I say Jiffy bags, I mean sort of self-sealing uh, envelopes of some sort, either, you know, uh, padded with um, sometimes re recycled newspaper, sometimes or shredded newspaper, sometimes with um, a plastic coating on the inside or outside, so that sort of Jiffy bag or cardboard boxes. So I, I would not recommend using your system cloth zipper bags uh, in, in mailing uh, with FedEx. Um, okay, so a, a next question, and this is a really good one. Um, we were told that Flynn costs would be adjusted due to the new courier. Any idea when we'll know what our Flynn price will be for next year so we can plan for it in our budget? That's so important, and thank you for that question. Um, we are in the process of uh, sending out the invoices. I'm sorry, that's the wrong word. I apologize. Let me start over. We TBLC and the division are getting ready. TBLC will actually be sending out the statements that show what the cost per participating library is for the first months of service. And so that will be coming out shortly. Now, I will tell you, there have been a couple of things that have um, delayed slightly are getting this information to you. Number one, the change, learning that we were gonna have to change vendors. So there was, there we've, that's caused a delay in sort of getting ready for, for this announcement. And number two, the fact that the UPS contract um, expired um, uh, and did not get renewed. That was the big thing. It expired. The expect, we knew it was expiring. We expect it to de, expected it to be renewed, which it was not. And so that has also delayed these statements. So know that these statements are coming. Um, they've been developed. We have the data. We just need to get it in a format that we can share it out with you. So it's a great question, and that is coming very soon. Um, we will have those statements available to you. Um, yes, yes. Okay, so there's a, a comment here. Using the orange bags has saved tons of money. Providing our own bags and boxes um, will be more expensive, and that that's very true. And we do um, we do see and honor and recognize that. Um, I will say that um, the orange bags have cost a ton of money um, for TBLC and the state, um, and it's just what we've realized is it does not work in these with these kinds of couriers. And, uh, sorry, carriers. So um, we're just we're getting out of the uh, of the bag business. And so those orange bags will retire. Um, sadly, I will say I do have that tear in my eye because um, I remember when the orange bags were introduced, folks, I'm that old. Um, but um, yes, we, we, we do realize that it will be a cost um, to you all related to, uh, to uh, shipping materials, absolutely. Uh, again, another question about the uh, what to do with the orange bag. Stay tuned on that. Stay tuned on that. I, I've got all these things running in the back of my head where I can imagine um, uh, several different places being interested in having those on hand for various uses. So stay tuned if you're willing to share them. Just stay tuned. Um, so there's a question right now. UPS only goes to our mail room on this at this particular uh, 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 college campus. Will FedEx be doing the same or will they come to the library building? Um, and we'll need to work on those um, individually um, as we change from this UPS courier to FedEx and depending on what you want um, your preference to be. I, I don't know that we can guarantee um, that they will 
deliver in one particular location versus another location, um, but, uh, but we certainly can work on that with our account executives after we make this change to FedEx. So stay in touch um, with uh, TBLC. Um, will there need to be a shutdown for a time to allow for in transit items from UPS for the transition to FedEx? The nice thing about that is no, um, there, we do not need that um, because UPS is not going away. It's just the contract under which we get a good price is going away. So we will not need to um, actually plan a shutdown period. Um, we will obviously in the transition, when we announce that timeline, we're taking that into consideration. Um, I, I believe, and you all can let me know uh, in the question panel, um, I believe what we're seeing is that our um, UPS deliveries are happening so much faster uh, than they used to happen in the past. And so, because again, it's all in state, um, and I think at most we're getting like two day turnaround um, from one corner of the state to the other, it, it's usually faster. Um, we will not need a shutdown of the resource sharing system in order to allow for this transition, but a great question. Um, what kind of bags can we use and how are the label how what are the labels going to be i believe the label will look very similar to the labels that you're using right now for ups you'll print them off on your network printer or the printer at your desk or for me it's the copier down the hall um, you're going to be able to just print those labels off on regular paper um, you can use any sort of mailing bag so if you were mailing a resource sharing item to kentucky or alabama or washington state um, you're going to use the same sort of bag, um, uh, same sort of jiffy bag, sorry, let me be very clear, or mailing bag ma or mailer. I'm looking at, I've got a box right across uh, my eyesight here that are the stay flat mailers that we've mailed out our calendars this year. Um, so obviously that would work also, that sort of a, uh, that sort of a bag or a stay flat package. Um, so uh, there's a, a note here that, um, there, which I will change to a statement. It is a true statement that everyone's budget will be affected because you'll now have to buy your own packaging material. And that is a true statement. Um, uh, that is something that again, locally, um, you all will have to, um, to determine um, how best to, to, um, to, to uh, plan for that. Um, the scales will work, the, any scale that you currently have that you're using to weigh packages absolutely will work um, with this new package. Um, and how do you print the new labels? We we were just talked about that. We're gonna, there, there will not be any vendor supplied label printers. You will print labels uh, using a printer like my network copier or a, a printer maybe that you have at your desk. Um, Yes, and so, yeah, so I am reading the questions. I know you can't, if you ask a question, you can see a question, but you can't see all the questions. Um, I'm reading them, I'm going down the list here. Um, so uh, as, as we, as we, as the questions are coming in, we have multiple branches. Will we, will we be able to continue sending them to branches or we, will we need to have a hub? Again, that's a local decision. Um, you all can decide how best to work this in your system. You, the answer actually is you can do either thing. Um, you could have a hub and then do deliver, uh, you know, you could manage delivery inside your system, or you can use what will be FedEx as you're now using UPS to do that delivery. Um, so um, that that is certainly something that um, you would uh, be able to uh, to do. Um, either way, whether it's hubs or branches, that's your uh, local choice. Um, I do have another note uh, back to the um, back to the supplies. Uh, we do have a TBLC is working to get some discounts at some places um, like Uline, Office Depot, and Staples. Um, and they will be able to l release more information as soon as they can. I will also tell you that city and county governments, as well as colleges and universities, K-12 schools and state agencies, can already use the state contract in order to buy supplies at a significantly reduced rate. Um, so all of those things would be uh, worth looking into. 
Uh, there's another question. And so I'm just going down as, as the questions have come in. So, um, you know, forgive me for repeating. Will scale still be needed for weighing boxes? Um, the answer, the answer there, according to the FedEx officials, is you have to include a weight for the box. It can be an estimated weight. So you, it, you don't have to use a scale, but you do have to include a weight for the package. Um, so if you already have a scale, please use that scale. Um, if you don't have a scale, we're working to try to get one um, for you, but we are having significant issues. Um, will there be a cutoff date for using UPS? Yes, there will be, and we will be communicating that out as soon as we have our timeline. So um, stay tuned on that. We will be giving a cutoff date. Um, there's a question here that says, will the address book be the same? Um, and the same codes for each library. We're working on that right now. Um, we're working on moving all those um, addresses and contacts from UPS to FedEx. And we certainly will make it as similar as we can as is you know, allowed by a different vendor's um, sort of platform and back end, but we're certainly working on that. Um, Will those participating with the UPS contract automatically be moved over? Yes, we're gonna start um, moving everybody over um, starting uh, today and this week in order to, um, we're gonna go ahead and move everybody that's currently participating. Um, libraries that uh, want to be added will be added um, at some point a little later. Um, you know, my, my guess is that we probably, if, if we had a library come to us today, we might say, hey, um, we're going to delay that just slightly until we go over the FedEx, but TBLC takes care of that. So I, I, I'm telling you what I'm thinking they might say, but obviously uh, if, you, if you're a new library and you want to participate, make sure to contact TBLC. Um, will we still be using the scale? Um, yes, please use that same scale. That scale is, is uh, vendor agnostic. You can just use that scale um, to, to get that, uh, that, uh, that weight for the uh, shipment. Will we be able to add reference numbers to the shipments? We believe so, and we know how useful that is. We know how we use reference numbers internally uh, for our bills, so we know how important that is. It might not be called a reference number, but we there will be some way that we can have um, a place where we can put in information that is pertinent. Um, Yes, use those same scales. Shipping labels, you'll be printing those labels out as you need them from the address book from um, FedEx. So you'll be able to, to do that as you're doing now on UPS. Um, you, the scales uh, are yours to keep however you got the scales. So um, I'm not aware that, that there were uh, although um, I might not be aware of everything, that's that's number one. But um, I'm not aware that any uh, that that there were any scales supplied by UPS, and so therefore um, any scales you have, I believe you can keep and will be able to use with FedEx. Um, there's a question here: um, Will uh, TBLC be providing libraries with reusable packaging for FedEx ground shipping? And the answer to that at this point is no. That there's no budget for that um, in the, the, for TBLC or for the Department of State Division of Library Information Services. What TBLC is trying to work out is some, um, some price contracts that would be advantageous. And then I'll also uh, remind folks that uh, you may work for an organization that already has access to the state uh, term contract that counties, cities, state agencies, K-12 libraries, and um, K-12 schools, I can't, I may have, just twisted all of that up, sorry. Publicly funded um, organizations can opt into the state term contract. So certainly we can put some information about that um, up on the TBLC uh, delivery page and then TBLC is working on discounts at the major uh, supply companies. So um, we'll got that. Um, so there's a question about uh, some particular person placed a came with UPS a long time ago and never been any follow up. Um, so please contact TBLC if that's the case. We need to know if you've placed a claim and you've heard nothing. Um, please make sure to keep TBLC in the loop on that. Um, so there's a question about be able to can we will we be able to schedule pickup direct to the library? Um, and we're working on that. Um, we don't have all the answers there. That's part of the, what we've got to determine. Uh, we certainly 
we understand that that's important and we want to be able to offer that. We just need to work with FedEx and see what they can do. Um, so uh, there's a question here. Will printing a FedEx label trigger a pickup? Um, please understand that we're still learning the FedEx parameters. And so we will give you more information on that um, as soon as we learn it from um, our new friends at FedEx. Um, when are we responsible for returning our label printer and scale to UPS? Um, I, I don't have any information about that. Obviously, if we get information from UPS about returning label printers and scales, we will pass it along. Um, but I'm not aware that there'll be um, anything that um, is, has to be returned. Um, but, uh, but stay tuned. We, if we get that information, we'll definitely pass it along to you. Um, so yes, and just a reminder, I am reading the questions um, out loud as they are coming in. Uh, is it, the question is, the, is the town hall being recorded? And it absolutely is. It'll be available on our YouTube page um, later today. Um, okay, so there's a question here about um, if, if could we send a scale to each location that wants to ha um, have pick up and drop off? And I will say that we have tried to buy every scale available in the U.S. I think, um, and most of the, all of them are on back order. So. We understand the importance for scales. We understand everyone needs a scale. We are trying to buy scales. There just aren't any scales to be purchased right now, given um, supply chain issues. Um, and I suppose whatever whatever the other demand besides Florida is for scales, because clearly um, uh, there are other uh, tags on that inventory. So we are trying to get scales, but um, it's there aren't any scales to, to be had right now. Um, again, with FedEx, you can put in an estimated weight and then that will be changed to the actual weight um, a little later on. So an estimated weight does work if you don't have um, a scale. All right, so it says many talking book libraries in the state use zebra labels. Okay, so maybe that's that specific kind of um, printer, um, perhaps. Is that there's a question here, what will the FedEx shipping labels look like? Um, I, I don't know that I can answer that. Specifically, I will tell you that in my office, we um, ship a lot of things out FedEx and we, uh, we were shipping a lot of things out UPS also. Um, I will say to my eyes, there's very little difference in what the um, label looks like. Obviously, there are some proprietary numbers and, of course, a logo uh, that I can, that, that you can see, uh, but the label looks very, very similar. Um, uh, so I don't know that we can tell you exactly what the FedEx sh shipping labels will look like, but, um, you know, what I see in, in our office for mailing out um, grant payments, um, that the, the label looks very, very similar. Okay, so there's a question here, does the state courier solely deliver institution to institution, library to library? And the answer to that is no, because what we're currently using is a package company. So um, a FedEx truck gets filled with FedEx packages and goes to wherever, the, whatever the packages are addressed to on the truck. Um, so the state courier, uh, and, and I will say for the three couriers that we've had in this one single year, um, we have not had one in any of the three companies that was solely institution to institution, library to library. Um, the, in every single case, it has been mixed institutions within the vehicle. Um, and so this is just, you know, will be true with FedEx as well. Um, let's see. There's a question here, cost-wise, would it be better to still ship multiple items or individual as we are not using the bags? Do we need to use FedEx boxes or pouches? All right, so because this is, we're using FedEx ground in the, um, and let, so let me go back to this, the, the state contract is for FedEx ground and there are no FedEx boxes or pouches for FedEx ground. 
we asked that question when we first met with FedEx because we knew um, that we needed we needed um, materials, um, and there are no FedEx ground packaging. If you use FedEx packaging, and which would be for like FedEx Express, or then your organization will have to pay that bill. The state contract will will have to bill you back for that cost because that's not part of the contract. Um, so there is no FedEx boxes or pouches available to us. Um, it, as far as um, multiple items or individual, um, again, because it's a true package-based cost, um, I'm sure there's a, a, a perhaps a diminishing returns, and maybe we could put some information on our webpage if we can figure that out. But um, each package is based on size and weight and distance. So um, I, I don't know that there's necessarily a huge cost savings one way or the other. We'll investigate that and we'll put it up on our webpage if we see that there's a cost advantage. Um, oh, very nice. So we've got a comment here that says that the UPS service was efficient and dependable. We're so excited to hear that, and that um, we're so glad. We know FedEx will be this uh, will be um, the same, or or even, maybe even better. Um, we're really excited. We know that being able to track packages and see where they are is incredibly important. So um, we're 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 thankful to be using these vendors that have that capacity. Um, will we, oh, and here we go. Um, will we be able to track the packages like we do with UPS? Absolutely, we will be able to do that. That's part of uh, the, the benefit of using this sort of shipper and a true shipper, package shipper, is that we have access through those, um, those codes. Uh, is the meeting recorded? And yes, it it's absolutely is being recorded and we will send out, we will send out a, um, a, a link to that. It'll also be posted on our YouTube page. So we will have, um, uh, information on that. Uh, it, there's a question here. Is there documentation on the change that's being developed? And today is the day we're announcing this. And so we will be sending out information uh, to all libraries that are using or, or all organizations that are using our statewide career. Um, and there will be information that will be available on the TBLC webpage. Uh, you're not going to see that right now today because we wanted to have this announcement first to give people um, to uh, information time to, uh, to to hear about this from us before we started putting that up on our webpage. Um, uh, there's a question here, will we have a sales rep? Um, that's a great question. We have asked FedEx and we have, we're not quite sure yet. Um, we, as soon as we know whether you'll have direct contact with a FedEx sales rep, we will absolutely let, let you know. Um, okay. Um, there's a question here that says, will we be responsible for reporting statistics to TBLC? Again, this is a place where we're still determining if there needs to be statistical reporting to TBLC. Um, I believe that the statistics that we need are being captured by the system. But again, that's the UPS system, right? So now what we've got is we're moving to FedEx. So stay tuned with us on this. We will be letting you know. Um, there'll be more information on that. Certainly there wouldn't, at most, I would imagine it would be the same statistics that you're doing now, um, but stay tuned. That's a great question. And we're still learning about moving to FedEx. Um, this, there's a question here. Will you continue to cover the cost for FedEx shipping for all? Um, I will say that the division is uh, is covering the cost for all for very few organizations. Um, the state, um, through our federal money, our Library Services and Technology Act money, underwrites the, the cost of the service for everyone in the state. Um, and then there are other organizations that chip in as well on, on your behalf. So that's a very difficult question to answer uh, to a group like this because there are that are there are some organizations that are paying a, some proportion of the of the cost and there's some that are paying a, a lower proportion potentially um so we will get more information to you on that on your in your statements but i will tell you that the state um through our federal money will continue to underwrite the cost of this for everyone absolutely um so there's a question here, other than the label we print, is there any additional stamps information needed on the packaging? Oh my goodness, I went, I've not been watching the time folks, so I'm gonna start talking a lot faster. Um, okay, so there, 
Oh, the only thing you'll need to print is the label. Once the label's on there, it'll have our account number. All the costs will be taken care of. There are no additional stamps or information needed on the packaging that we're aware of. And again, we'll, we'll let you know if, if that changes. Um, there's a question here. Why isn't FedEx supplying boxes? Do they no longer offer supplies if you ask the driver? Again, our contract is with FedEx Ground. FedEx Ground does not have any supplies. If you use FedEx Express or FedEx Super Speedy, I don't, whatever they call them, I'm sorry, I should have looked all that up before we came on today, then that will be an, a significantly increased cost that your library organization will have to pay. FedEx Ground is the cost that's covered under this contract and under that type of shipping FedEx Ground, there are no uh, FedEx supplies. Um, so here's a, um, a so there's a nice comment here, and, and I do. We're about five minutes until the top of the hour. Um, I will um, stay on because there are some more questions. So I'm, but I, I understand if you need to to go to other uh, things today. There's a nice comment here that says uh, the division and TBLC have taken good care of us in our recent transitions. We know that you will make this transition as seamless as possible. The directions and information have been great. Thanks for taking. Uh, good care of us. So thank you so much for that comment. We certainly have been trying, and we we, um, we know that transitions are are um, are anxiety producing uh, and, and 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 somewhat difficult. It's been sometimes a little rocky, but we we really uh, we want to um, make sure that we are giving you as much information as we are aware of at any given time. Um, there is a, a statement here. It seems like that this is a cost shift to library members due to the loss of orange bags, uh, that, that locally they'll need to purchase mailing uh, bags. Any plans to coordinate reusable mailers that are compatible with FedEx packaging requirements? And that's a great, um, some, maybe something that could be taken up within a county or, or a, a region. Um, uh, so there certainly will be a need to find um, potentially recycled, uh, good condition recycled uh, jiffy bags or boxes um, that uh, to be able to use for the for mailing. That's absolutely true. Um, so there's another question here about continuing to cover the uh, will the division continue to cover the cost of shipping through FedEx for all. We are underwriting the cost for everyone, um, and so the there is a cost share that is. Um, uh, for each organization, and that is paid in a multiple different ways. So we'll be sending out more information about that. Um, then it says, I think this is a question, can the orange bags be used for campus delivery? Um, and, and that would be fine. However you want to use the orange bags after we move to FedEx, you can use the orange bags in any way you would like to. Um, there's another uh, question here. Can we get supplies from our local FedEx person? Uh, FedEx Ground does not have supplies, so there will be no supplies to be able to be gotten from FedEx. Again, if you use anything other than FedEx Ground, your organization will have to pay that cost. Um, the only thing that's covered under a contract is FedEx Ground. Um, there's another, they're asking about FedEx envelopes. The same thing is true. There are no FedEx ground envelopes. So if you use FedEx, if you use any FedEx packaging, and maybe it's easier to say it this way, if you use FedEx packaging, uh, your library will have to reimburse the state uh, for the cost uh, of the, because it's not covered under the contract. Uh, so uh, I would stick, I would stay away from FedEx um, packaging. Uh, uh, the UPS was great. Uh, when does the contract expire? It expires in March. Um, let's see, there's another question here. Maybe we could make a note in Flynn when books being shipped are coming in with FedEx instead of UPS so that each receiving library will know what to expect. That That's a great suggestion um, as we're moving into that transition time. Um, are we expecting FedEx deliveries will be as speedy as UPS? Yes, uh, we absolutely anticipate that they should be absolutely the same on the same sort of time scale. UPS delivered to us daily. How will FedEx work? Um, and we're working on the logistics, and so we'll let you know about whether it's daily or whether it's you know on demand. Um, so there's a question here about the decision about using orange bags. Was that a FedEx policy? It is not a FedEx policy. This is something that the division and TBLC have um, announced. 
we will no longer be using the orange bags. And while I am very thankful you haven't had issues with the orange bags um, in UPS, there have been a number of issues with the orange bags in UPS. So um, we, we're just taking this opportunity to retire the orange bags. Um, so uh, what kind of insurance does FedEx provide for ship, shipments? It's gonna be very similar to what you're seeing in UPS right now. Um, so there's a statement here about um, that with UPS and the orange bags, we didn't need to measure the package. With FedEx, will we need to provide measurements in addition to the weight? Stay tuned on that. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but we'll let you, we'll definitely let you know. Can you send multiple items in one package? And the answer is yes, absolutely. And then there's a thank you for all you do for us, and we appreciate that. Um, yes, yeah, so TBLC is, I'll reiterate, is looking to um, find discounts uh, with retailers for shipping supplies. That is absolutely, and absolutely, you may want to check with your procurement office to see if you can uh, find out if you can use the state contract um, as well, locally. Uh, can you use re, reuse Jiffy bags and mailers? Absolutely, you certainly can. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Academic book replacement fees are quite high. Can we be assured FedEx can cover these dollar amounts? We we th it's all part of the contract with um, FedEx, and so we can't change those amounts. But we will certainly communicate with you on what those amounts are. Um, and if there's any ability to take on additional insurance, again, that we would have to talk about that and what's covered under our contract. So stay tuned on that. Um, we will definitely look into that and, and be letting you know. Um, we are at 11.01. I'm going to keep uh, looking and, uh, and answer. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to look over here really quickly and make sure I am good. I am good. So I'll stay on for a few minutes longer. I'm getting to the end of the questions, folks. Thank you so much for all your great questions. We really, really appreciate it. I'm going to keep going through questions, but if you need to sign off to get on with the rest of your day, we totally understand. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, I'll keep going on the questions here. Um, now that libraries will be taking on the cost of packaging supplies directly, will that be taken into account in considering the charge for the courier service? In other words, could the price be reduced? This is a great question. Um, the price will not be reduced. Um, what in essence happens is there sort of three different parts, at least three different parts of the cost of this service. One is the cost that is paid to the vendor, now UPS, soon to be FedEx. There is a local cost, um, which you might think about as match or something, that is your local cost. So like your local staff members, right, who are working to package these materials. So that has been a cost you've been bearing um, locally all along. Now what will be also encompassed with that in that match cost is the cost of supplies potentially, as we've been talking about. There also is, in many instances for many libraries, a, a cost share, which is the amount that is paid directly by the library or by some uh, partnering organization that's paid into uh, the system uh, as the cost share for uh, the use of the system. So um, there will not be a reduction in, in price based on the local match expenditures for the, for the system, uh, for, for shipments. Um, so here's a great one. Can we use the um, statewide courier to deliver story time kits with multiple books in it to schools within our county? Um, Absolutely, that that's great. I mean, uh, we could certainly uh, you can mail anywhere that um, that now UPS and soon to be FedEx delivers. You absolutely could use that. Um, obviously, the shipping or the shipper um, would uh, bear the cost for that because we, we probably need to. You probably need to contact. Um, this is Jennifer Shipley. Probably need to contact TBLC because I'm not sure how. Be, I don't know that the lot. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. I don't know that the school would have access to the administrative account to get it back to you. So you may need to use the. Um, you may need to sort of set it up so that you're shipping it to them and also ship giving them a return label. But anyway, I'm sure that can be worked out. So, uh, get in touch with TBLC. Um, oh, good. Okay, so I, uh, here's a great tip. In Amazon, they have a uh, they provide a weight for the books uh, with ISBN, so that's that's great. Um, oh, okay, and here's another great idea. 
Uh, before we had a scale, we used a baking cooking digital scale with a basket that held the items to be shipped. Excellent. So that's another great tip if you don't have a, 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 ma a mailing scale. Um, so since this is going to be FedEx ground, how much longer will it take to receive packages? It sometimes was a day turnover with UPS. We believe we're going to have the same exact um, delivery time frames um, with our FedEx friends with FedEx ground. Um, UPS is aware of this change already. They absolutely are already aware. Um, and many organizations like my very own here at the Department of State is already moving away from using UPS because this contract is ending. Um, so my associate dean will want to know how this will affect our budget. When will we be invoiced either by TBLC or UPS or FedEx? So just to be clear, TBLC will be sending out statements um, and, and or invoices. You've already received the invoice for the current year. Um, and so the statements that talk about your uh, costs will be coming out from TBLC um, in the very next uh, few days. Um, so, for, okay. Okay, so there's another one that's asking about um, about uh, if you could have a hub service or a localized service, and that's to get a local decision. So that's um, all, we'll work with you individually on that, absolutely. Um, did FedEx give a reason for not allowing orange bags? We, we didn't ask FedEx. Um, this is something that we have found through UPS and through the sort of the machinery that is used. The bags really don't hold up well, and some of our bags are very old. And so this was not something that, to be very clear, was not something that was asked of FedEx. Um, the retirement of our shipping bags, our orange bags, um, is a decision um, uh, made by the division and TBLC. So um, that, that, uh, there you have that. Uh, what's the turnaround delivery time for using FedEx and shipping packages? Is it a three business days across the state? Uh, we don't believe it's going to be shorter than that. Um, uh, that on the on the ground, uh, the FedEx ground, we believe it'll be one day, if uh, maybe two days. Again, as soon as we get more information, we'll let you know. Um, so, do you think we could use the FedEx clear label holder glued to our own packaging to hold the printed address label? Um, Probably so. That would probably work very well. Um, is there going to be other webinars before moving to FedEx? Um, uh, yes, we're going to be having open office hours. And again, we're going to be sending out lots of information in writing on the it'll be on web updated web pages as well as uh, communication sent out. Um, okay, so if you already have FedEx, will the state prices only affect any items going to the courier account or will it cover all pricing for that library? So the state account it sort of depends on how your library how that contract is set up if your library already has a contract and it's and it's already under the terms of the state contract then your local pricing ought to be very similar to our courier pricing um, but it, again the state contract is available to publicly funded cities counties state agencies uh, k-12 schools um, and the public uh, colleges and universities. So um, it's not available to every organization type, but it, it, you should be tapping into that if you fall into one of those types of organizations. Um, all right, there's another full agreement and thanks. Thanks for um, lots of great thanks statements. Um, okay. TBLC is so wonderful for, for all their support. Thanks for all you do and for guiding us through all these changes. You all are the best. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, here's a statement. This library budget is already very tight. We're concerned about the additional cost of shipping supplies. And uh, thank you for letting us know that. And we we were um, uh, we we anticipated hearing that uh, today and so um, continue to have these conversations with us. Uh, Jiffy bubble or boxes and I think either thing is work sort of the Jiffy mailers with bubbles or boxes is fine. Will, will printing a label trigger a delivery with FedEx? Uh, we're not sure yet. Stay tuned. We're still learning about that. Um, and here's one that says this is a mammoth undertaking that has been given to um, us here at uh, DLIS and TBLC. Know how much we appreciate everyone in DLIS DLIS and TBLC, thank you very much for that. And lots of thank yous here. So Mr. Deb, I can see right there was the top of the hour. Um, 
Then it says, can you use the courier service to deliver to individuals? And the answer to that is absolutely no. Uh, the courier service as we set it up is for library to library inside the state of Florida. Um, I will tell you that we have had a few packages that have been sent to individuals outside of the state of Florida, and those are being billed out, sorry, billed back to um, to the library actually, um, because we that's not part of the of the contract. The contract that we have set up and have in place for courier service is library to library inside the state of Florida. So we can't deliver uh, to individuals. Now, you might be able to use the state contract if you have like a home delivery service and you work for a library system that can opt into this, you might be able to set up a um, like a home delivery service using the state contract, but it would not be through the courier account and the account that, that the division has um, in place for this particular uh, program. All right, so I th I'm, I'm at, at the end of the questions. I've talked really, really fast here uh, towards the end. Um, thank you all so very, very much for being here today. Thank you so much for letting us know your concerns about the change, your questions, your concerns, your budget uh, questions and your budget impacts, which are, um, are, are real and true. And we know that and we recognize that. Um, again, this is part of the reason why we wanted to come out and communicate with you all as absolutely as soon as we could so that you would be aware of the changes as they are happening um, and, and have a little bit longer to uh, to make some uh, uh, decisions and, and think through some of these changes. So I, I do appreciate you being here today and, and for going slightly over time here. Um, really appreciate the, the, your time and attention. This recording will be available on our YouTube page. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful rest of your Monday, a wonderful rest of uh, Valentine's Day. Um, you know, uh, feeling the library love, which is awesome. And, and you all are, are an incredible group to work with every day. TBLC and the staff there, the division, we're very honored to work alongside all of you um, every day and, and providing service to, to the folks in your area. So thank you all very much. I'm going to stay on. If you have any more questions, um, just put them in the question page. Panel. Um, and and um, just glad to, to have everybody here today. Thank you very much. I'm going to mute for a moment and take a sip of water. All right, thanks. All right, that's better. All right, so there's a question here. Where would I find stats from UPS or my library for the items I sent? Um, we have those, and it's a really great question, Sarah. I don't know if you can get to that through the admin module. Um, if you will contact TBLC delivery at tblc.org, they'll be able to give you some information. I do know that the statements that will be sent out will also have that information related to stats. Um, so, um, you know, we'll be happy to get those stats to you because we know that those are important and we do have access to them and they're part of the statements. Um, great. Yes, yes. Keep the questions coming. You know how to get a hold of us. Um, so just, you know, keep keep those questions coming. And TBLC delivery at tblc.org is a, a great way to continue to ask questions. Um, because uh, if you're like me, you're going to think of more questions this afternoon. So just just keep them coming and we're going to keep you in the loop as as things change and as we know uh, more about this this particular transition. Thank you all very, very much. We're at 1115. So we're 15 minutes over. I'm sorry for that, but I'm glad there were so many questions. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Got a good question about. Um